All right, we turn now to our special series, School Matters. We're looking at how the pandemic is affecting students' education. School districts nationwide say two to three times more students are failing classes this year. USA Today recently spoke with students about the challenges they face because of remote learning. I feel like this online learning is really just affecting my grades, and I'm really just forget about the grades, not learning as much as I normally would on a normal year. And I feel that it is so important to get education. And when it's so hard to get it and learn through this screen, it really makes it difficult. It almost feels like I'm learning material and just like taking a bunch of notes and then, you know, taking these multiple choice quizzes. And then the second I'm done with that quiz or test, the information just like, it just slips off my mind. So I feel like I'm not really making any progress. We're joined now by Sal Khan, founder of the Khan Academy. The nonprofit organization offers free educational lessons online. Sal, good morning. Uh, thanks for being with us because this, this has been a really tough year for both students and their teachers. Um, who, who, both sides are struggling, I think, to get through this. What do you, how can teachers at this point help students? As, as we said, so many of them have had a really tough time keeping up. Yeah, at this point, it's it's all about engagement. You know, the stories we just heard, uh, those students were having trouble feeling connected. We know there's multiple layers of stress in the world right now, COVID being the top one, the economy, there's a lot else going on. And then on top of that, students are expected to kind of stay engaged while they're learning primarily in these cases through a screen. And so there's a couple of things, teachers, uh, and they're doing their best job. It's a hard thing for teachers as well, uh, but as much as possible, pull them out of the screen, make the classes interactive, give time for kids to interact with each other, put them into these virtual breakout sessions. Realize that the screen right now is students' main way to connect with other people socially. So use that class time, use a little bit of it to also get some social connection because that's more likely to drive students to real connection. And then when students are failing, which they're starting to do disproportionately, we need to give them extra chances. It can't be you got to see a D and F on a test right now and that's your final grade on your transcript. When we get back to school, you have to have a, a, a method to, to remake it. You you think, it. Sal, do you think schools should even recon reconsider giving grades at all this year? Well, I don't think there's anything wrong with grades per se. It's always valuable to know where you are. What I think schools really need to make sure, and you know, this is something we've always believed at Khan Academy even before COVID, is if you got a C or a D or an F, that shouldn't be your final grade because then that gap persists and it becomes harder to learn more advanced things. This was true even before COVID. Now we know the situation is happening to even more students. And when you get that C or D or F, it hits your self-esteem. There's, there's a lot of evidence that it lowers your rate of graduating, especially if it's in a core class class. Uh, and there's all these other stressors around. So you should always have the chance, especially given the circumstances we're in right now, that when we get back to normal or even before we get back to normal, you should have multiple shots at goal to be able to move, improve that to a B or an A. Hey, Saul, uh, Tony DeCopo here. Uh, on the subject of getting back to normal, I mean, one of the big obstacles to getting back in the classroom is teachers, understandably, don't feel safe there. That being the case, should they get vaccines that are now available on the early side rather than down the line? I'm a big proponent of that because we've seen over the last several months that uh, teaching is such a, a, a linchpin, not just for kids to continue learning and being engaged like we just saw, but it's a child care issue. It's keeping other families from being able to engage, especially families uh, that make low, lower income and can't afford other forms of child care. You know, my wife's a physician. She just got a letter from her hospital that they're going to start getting the vaccine in the next month. She works at the county hospital. I think teachers really need to be in that first or second wave as well. Sal, how do you deal with with the problem of uh, of income disparity with with kids? I mean, one thing that's very clear is that for low income and minority kids, they're less likely to have the appropriate technology they need for this, and and they were in many cases they were already behind and are falling further behind, and that's a problem. It's very hard for teachers to address through a computer. Yeah, and what you just described has always been a problem uh, that we've always tried to articulate that we need to help fix. What, one way to fix it, and there's a lot of layers to this, is 
more resources to keep students engaged. That's even more important now, you know, above and beyond what we just talked about, how you can run classes more in, in a more interactive way. We're seeing some school districts successfully calling kids once a day, even for 30 seconds, even for a minute, making sure that they feel engaged. Uh, but we also know things like the digital divide are a major, major issue. 20, 30, 40 percent of some communities aren't even able to access right now, or 5, 10 percent of kids, even when they can access, are just not, like school districts can't find them right now. And so when we get back to normal, hopefully sooner than later, it really has to be treated like a disaster recovery. We have to figure out mechanisms to fill in kids' gaps, ways for them to do remediation. Obviously, Khan Academy is working on that. Uh, I have a, a, a free, this is another not-for-profit program called schoolhouse.world to give free tutoring. We have capacity for several thousands of kids now. Uh, so we need to do whatever we can collectively to make sure there's ways to fill in those gaps and they feel supported. Yeah, that's a good analogy, Sal, a disaster recovery operation. Uh, thank you very much, Sal Khan. We appreciate it.